Hello everyone. Let's say there is a factory that is running well. A competitor is planning to sabotage the operation. So he sends something harmful there along with the shipment of raw materials. If the security is alert enough, that harmful substance will be blocked at the entry, right? You know, our cell is like a factory only. It also needs many things from outside like oxygen, food, minerals, etc. to function. Can harmful substances enter the cell along with those essential materials? Let us see. The security system of a cell is more effective than the most advanced security system you may know. The plasma membrane of a cell only allows certain selected materials to enter the cell. Let us see how it works. Take a funnel and put a piece of cloth, say a muslin cloth, in such a way that whatever you pour into the funnel passes through the cloth. Now prepare some tea and pour it into the funnel. You see only the tea decoction, that is the liquid part, passes through the cloth and the tea leaves get stuck and are left behind, right? The cloth allowed water to pass through. It also allowed certain material dissolved in water to pass through as those particles are very tiny. These substances which make tea are colorful and fragrant. The quality of a membrane that causes it to allow a substance to pass through it is called permeability. This cloth, filter paper etc. are semi-permeable because they don't allow everything to pass through them. The cell membrane or the plasma membrane in a cell controls what goes in and out. If you filter sugar solution, you would not get sugar particles back because the dissolved sugar particles are so tiny that they pass through the filter paper. But a plasma membrane allows only selected substances to pass through. This selection is not simply based on size. It is based on the requirement of cell. That is why the plasma membrane is called selectively permeable membrane. Now let us do a small experiment. Scoop out a piece from the center of a potato and make a chamber in it so that you can pour something in it. Now pour some saturated sugar syrup in it and mark the level with a pin. Put the potato piece in a beaker filled with tap water. If you keep it like this undisturbed for some time the water level inside the potato cup will increase. Why? It is because the concentration of the syrup inside the potato cube is much more than the concentration of water. So the water passes through different membranes and moves into the cube. This process is called osmosis. In osmosis, the molecules of a solvent tend to pass through a semi-permeable membrane from a less concentrated solution into a more concentrated one. If you see, the potato is made of tissues as it is a plant part only. So, the water had to pass through cell walls and cell membranes to enter the cup. Now, let us do the reverse. If we put tap water in the scooped out potato cup and keep it in a saturated sugar syrup, then water will move out of the potato into the beaker through the osmosis process. So the water enters the cell or leaves the cell in the osmosis process. The process in which water molecules leave the cell is called exosmosis. Remember, X indicates exit from the cell. The process in which water molecules 
enter the cell is called endosmosis. Remember, N indicates entry into the cell. So what is the importance of osmosis for living organisms? Let us see. In case of plants, the water enters the root through osmosis. The water moves between the cells through osmosis. Osmosis helps in opening and closing of the stomata of the leaves. Osmosis brings about the movement of water and minerals in certain plants. In our body, the waste materials are filtered from blood through osmosis. Also, the useful materials are absorbed along with water through osmosis. So you see, osmosis is a very important process for living organisms. That's all for now. Bye-bye.